Welcome then to the Reconcile Your Bank Account webinar. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I wanted to share, close the screen. First thing I wanted to share is your beginning balances, because we've talked a little bit in the past about getting your general ledger set up. Your beginning balances for your bank account balances, checking and savings, are actually set up through the bank reconciliation. Whereas you might recall this, under setups, accounting and payroll, you have these enter beginning general ledger balances. Now the reason why you can't even get access, let's just for fun put it on the 1st of July, you'll notice you don't even have, even have access on the general ledger to put in a beginning balance for your checking accounts because they would be right here. They'd be, I think it's 11,010, 11,020. The reason why is because it's tracked in two different parts of the system on the general ledger, but also in the bank reconciliation, that's why you have to do it through the bank reconciliation. So it actually shows up in two places at once, populates the general ledger, but more importantly, it will show up as a beginning balance in your checking account. So let's just put in a beginning balance in a checking account that doesn't have any activity yet. So let's say, I think my checking account three is empty. Okay, so you can see there's no transactions, no transactions cleared, this is a fresh one. So what you do when you set up your beginning balances is you go under, under the Add button, and it's an adjustment. It's actually your first adjustment to your bank account. And in most systems come with four default setups. It comes with a bank charges, credit card charges, earned interest and return check. So you normally have to click Add and create an adjustment for your beginning balance setup. Well, of course, I already have one set up. But what it does is this does a deposit, hopefully because your bank accounts hopefully have a positive amount in it when you start the system. But it's actually putting that beginning balance to the system balance initial setup general ledger account, 19900 And what happens, and this, I always say that the bank account is the great equalizer <laughs> because if you go through two cycles of balancing your checkbook, you pretty much get everything that transpired through your business in, into the system because you'll be going along, reconciling your bank account. You'll be like, what the heck is that charge? I don't have that on my bank, on my check register. So you have to put it into the system. So anything that's auto debit, like for example, um, Blue Cross Health Insurance, um, you know, credit card charges, if you earn interest on any of your um, deposit accounts, that kind of thing. So I've always said that, you know, just run your business, keep churning business, just keep writing ROs, entering parts, restock parts invoices, and write all your checks out of here, as many as you can. Even if you're handwriting checks, it's not a big deal because when you get to this point, you'll make sure everything has to be in the system or else you couldn't reconcile your bank account. So let's show, let's, let's go through this beginning balance setup. So we'll just click on this adjustment and we would date it let's say I was I will say I went live with my system or I went live with my checking account information let's say July 1st I actually would put my beginning balance date on the 30th and usually what I would recommend shops to do is call you know July 1st call or go online banking and find out what your real actual bank balance is and of course that is as of midnight the day before so let's say when we started um, tracking it I had five thousand dollars in my checking account so I put in the beginning balance date which is usually the night before you're going to start tracking it in your system and then the beginning balance and I usually just put beginning balance from online banking that's what I like to do and I just click OK so now what it's actually done is it can, it, think about it this way. Our opening statement balance, because we'd never balanced in our system before, never reconciled in our system before, was zero. And my ending statement balance, let's say as of June 30th, is $5,000, right? Because I just called in and that's what it was at the end of the month, $5,000. So that's where you enter this ending statement balance. And of course, there's only one thing tagged, my adjustment. So it says, 
This is my cleared total. So this is my difference. So you don't have to do this this first time, but it makes your next bank, bank, re reconciliation, bank reconciliation a little bit more logical. Let me show you why. So after I check this one in the cleared column, I click Done and Save and Post. So this would post any cleared checks or deposits I had or adjustments. Save and Post. And my statement closing date, again, I'm going to backdate it to the, what would actually be the end of my bank statement itself. If I was actually doing this off of a bank statement, for me, I'm doing it off of online banking. And my online banking said, at close of business, June 30th, I had $5,000 or $5, in there. Click OK. And OK. And it actually prints out um, this entire reconciliation sheet. So this is pretty handy. So you can uh, print this out as a record give it to your accountant or whatever. So now, if I go back into banking, reconcile bank account, checking account number three, it says my opening statement balance is 5000 And when I went to reconcile this, I would put in my ending statement balance, let's say at the end of July's statement, so whatever amount that was, let's say it's $3,800, then it means I've actually received a certain amount of money, but paid out an extra 1200 bucks. That's how it went from that 5000 to 3800 So that's where you would enter your statement, ending statement balance. So that's just a little bit about how you get those starting numbers in there. Now check this out. What we just did through the bank recon reconciliation is now if we go to accounting on the menu bar and click on our uh, chart of accounts and check and click on that checking account number three, you can see here is my ending balance, five thousand dollars. And let's look at this. Look at it this way: under reports, two different ways you can get there. But let's say under reports, general ledger. If I look at my balance sheet, click run report. Ah, three today is fine. Here I also have my checking account number three, five thousand dollars. Okay, so that's that's the way that you get your beginning balance in there. So the second part of this, let's actually do a bank reconciliation, just a pretend one. Of course, you guys know this is all demo material in my system. Any, let me stop. Any questions? That's pretty clear on how to get that beginning balance in? Yes. Okay. So now under banking, I'm going to go back into reconcile bank account. I'm going to reconcile checking account one. And let's say I'm going to, I'm going to actually reconcile it for April. Let's say I haven't done April yet. Now two things. Opening statement balance, in this, in my example, let's say my bank balance as of March 31st was 4092.20. So then I would put in my ending statement balance. This is off my paper bank statement. What does it say my ending balance is at the, at the end of that statement? Let's say 664132. So that's my ending statement balance. So now I have a difference in red. So what's our goal? We want this difference to be zero. So how do we do that? Well, we just tag everything on that bank statement that says cleared. So I have a deposit, I have a deposit, I have a deposit. Now a couple things as I'm tagging these, we can order this list here by number or by date. So let's say I'm going to order it by date. That way I'm going to kind of get all this stuff together that in the same time period. I think it looks a little better. That's personally how I do it. So look, I actually have a check from March that didn't clear. It's again, just an example, guys. So let's say now it did clear. And then I also had another check, check 104, my rent check, that cleared as well. And let's say I have two more deposits. So here's a deposit. And, and theoretically, if you can envision this, I would have my bank statement sitting on my desk in front of me and I'd be checking off each one of these as I check it off on my computer I've been checking it off on my bank statement so you'll notice then when I click them all okay well this is everything that's on my bank statement but you know I have two other things on my bank statement I've got some bank charges and I've got some interest so and they're not showing up because remember I said your bank reconciliation is your great equalizer <laughs> it's what makes sure everything is getting put into the system. So I think, oh, okay, I've got an adjustment on my bank statement for bank charges. I click Add. I add an adjustment, and it's for bank charges. So I highlight bank charge, 
and I click Select. And let's say on my bank statement that was at the end of the month, so 430, and it was for 10 bucks. And I just might want to put monthly service charge. Not like any bank ever change, charges that any, anymore, but sometimes they do. So we'll click OK. And you'll notice when I click OK, it gets added to the list, and it automatically has a check mark next to it. And then, see, I'm off $10. $10. Well, my bank st statement also says I earned $10 in interest. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> click on Add. I'm going to do another adjustment. And I'm going to click on Interest Earned. Okay, so let's say I um, click Select. And let's say I earn $3. And then I go ahead and click OK. And you'll see interest earned. Now, oh, I didn't change my date. No big deal. Just click Edit. Change it to 4.30. You guys know how I am about my dates. I mess them up all the time. OK, so that should go back up to the top, right? Yep, there it is. OK. And I'm going to check it now because that one didn't check or probably didn't check because I moved it. So now I have another $13. So what else do I have on my bank statement? Well, I actually have on my bank statement some credit card charges, $13. So here's another one. So that's how I make sure everything gets put in there. So I click on credit card charges, click on add, and um, it's a charge. And I'm going to say credit card processing fees. Boy, wouldn't that be nice if it was only $13? So it's $13. So where do I want it to go to? See, it's actually not um, telling me. Um, oh, yeah, it is. It's going to financial credit card discount. OK, so when I click on account, I could change where it's going to. But I'm going to leave it at credit card discount, see if it'll show up. OK, so it's saying required. Right now it says financial credit card discount. I need just to find that in my list. So I go to hit 6, the number 6, and it jumps me down to my expenses. And I go to Financial, Credit Card Discount, and click OK. So now, now I've just um, added this, but I haven't added it to my, um, to my statement. I'm going to click Select. So I hit Add instead of Select is what I should have done is hit Select, guys. So there it is. Again, change my date, 4.30. Actually, let's say it came out on the 25th. may not always be the same last day of the month. Okay. You want to change the amount? Um, you know oh, no, what? I'm sorry. Just, oh, not at all. You know what I did, Walter, is I actually click Add, and I hit Adjustment, and I hit. I shouldn't have hit the Add button. I should have just hit the Select button. Right. Instead of Adding or Edit, let's see if I hit Edit. Now I can zero it out. That's why it was asking me for a GL number. I'm thinking that was weird. So now it automatically knows that it always goes to Financial Credit Card Discount. I shouldn't have had to change it, and that's why. Let's see, I actually put a second one in there. So now I'm, my difference is zero. So my opening statement said 4092.20. My ending statement on my actual paper, you know, my actual paper bank statement said 6641.32. And since I checked everything, now it says cleared total. So my difference is zero. I, I'm rocking. I, I did it. It's great. So now I just click done. And if I weren't done, let's say I, you know, I needed to double check on a a check. Let's say I wasn't sure if this had cleared or not for some reason. I could always hit Done and Save Only. Notice Save and Post is grayed out if my difference is not zero. So let's say I hit Save Only, and I can come back to it later. And in the beginning, you may come back to this many, many, many times before, before you get it right. So now I would just come back. Oh, I'm going to sort by date. Check this check. OK. Um, oop, I got it. Every single time, though, you do have to re-enter your ending statement balance, 664132. And then I'm going to click on Done, and I'm going to click on Save and Post. So what it will do, it marks all these checks as cleared. And you might remember that if you try to go into your checking account and void one of these checks, after they're cleared, no dice. Because what the system is saying, and remember, I always say you want what happens in Max Tracks to parallel what happens in real life. So if they actually did clear and you reconciled your bank account, you shouldn't be able to go back in and void a check, right? 
because it's cleared, because that's what really happened. So if you need to fix something, you may have to actually do another um, workaround to fix your boo-boo, which it happens. But you would have had a bank statement that said, yes, I did have a check, number 105, to Yellow Pages for 1200 bucks. That could happen. So we'll click Save and Post. Statement closing date. Again, you always want to change this date. Um, it's not a huge deal if you mess up. Yes, I've done that a few times. But I'm going to say April 30th and click OK. And then, it again, this will print out. And what's nice about this list is it's checked in the cleared column for everything I just cleared. And everything is unchecked here for stuff that's still open in my checking account. So that's the way that that works. And if it's multiple pages, of course, you would just hit page up. But this is just one page. And then you can print this if you like. I'm just going to click close. But a lot of people just keep this and they put it in the same file with their bank statements. That way they know it was all cleared. Now if I go back into banking, reconcile bank account, checking account number one, you'll see those are all gone. And you'll see my new opening statement balance is at 6641.32 because my next statement will be from May 1st to May 31st. Any questions on that, guys? So what's kind of interesting, like I said, the reason why this is a great equalizer is that pretty much everything in your business runs through your checking account. Credit cards received, um, checks received, cash taken in, taken out, um, you know, checks that you've written, EFT, electronic funds transfers, maybe you pay your... Um, uh, your payroll taxes, you pay them, maybe they're auto-debited from your checking account. So everything flows through here. So what happens, I'm um, actually working with another shop, and his name was Derek too, by the way, and God bless him, he is not on account with anybody, not a soul. So he can write 10 to 25 checks a day. So let me tell you, <laughs> we're balancing his first bank statements with quite a challenge just because he you know, wrote a gazillion, there's three people that wrote checks, and they're all hand, they were at the time all handwritten checks. So he had to pull stuff out of the woodwork to figure out, well, what the heck was this check written for? What was this check written for? So what's nice about being computer checks is you have to go through the system. Now, keep in mind, you guys all know, if you need to, just grab one of those computer checks, hand write it, check numbers are on it, um, just handwrite it, and then when you get around to it, you just enter it into the system and just post only. Okay, I'm sure you guys are real familiar with that. Just go into the write a check, write it to whomever, and just put, you know, uncheck the to be printed and put in the actual check number that you guys used. Not a big deal. Um, so, you know, a lot of people would ask, also ask, so why doesn't MaxTrax print the check number on the check? Well, you need to decide what, you know, what check number it is. The thing is, is that checks come pre-printed with the check number. So if you had one through MaxTrax printed on there, you could actually have two different check numbers. Well, since the banks would just go crazy with that kind of situation, we don't have MaxTrax actually print the check numbers. Now, what does happen is people will go to print a slew of checks or maybe they'll go into, let's see if I have any in my queue. They'll go to print a bunch of checks in queue, and they may do like a whole series of them. And if you print out all these checks, and then you realize that you, see if I tag, let's say I want to print all these checks, and I won't do it all the way, but let's go for an example. I'm going to print these checks. If I hit print, first thing it asks me is what's my starting check number? Well, if you don't start it with the correct number, or if the checks that you have in your system you know, you've got a pile in there, and you're figuring, oh, okay, this is check number 112, 113, 114, 115, and you realize that, realize that somebody has accidentally pulled one out of the mix. It's not a big deal. Because MaxTrax doesn't print the check numbers on there, you just go through and print them as normal. Here, I'm just going to cancel out of this for this example. You still can go back into banking, go to your view check register, and remember, as long as they haven't cleared yet, I can go in here and highlight this check, hit edit, and change my check number to 118 instead of 110, for example. So if you, if you make a boo-boo, it's um, real easy to fix.
and I just, you know, take that motor tracks. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times we could never fix that in motor tracks. So you have that uh, flexibility. The other thing is, for example, um, payroll. Like you can see on my example here, payroll, if it's auto deposit, if you don't have to write checks, um, it, I have a check number of EFT. So what I would do is go through the whole payroll function, run payroll. Let's, let's do it for fun. Let's do a couple here. Ah, I'm just going to ignore this. Let's just do a couple of checks, just these two. So click Next. Um, let's just for fun do this. And let's put another guy in there. Okay. Do I want to print these payroll checks now? Yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to print them now. Do I want to enter more payroll records? No. So now, let's say they were electronic fund transfer or electronic debit for payroll, it, or auto deposit so it's called, I think. If you go into banking and you go into check register, view check register, you know, and make sure it's the right checking account. I know some people use a secondary checking account for payroll. Then you'll see CST payroll down here. These are the ones I just did. So now all I have to do is highlight them, click edit, and I put for my check number EFT, electronic funds transfer. And it says the check number you've selected to print already exists. Well, you want to continue, yes, of course, because I'll have a gazillion EFTs. You can see that in here. Same thing. Just click edit, uncheck it, EFT. And you'll notice something. Um, again, duplicate warning, yes, I know. Now those checks. If you go into print checks in queue, those checks aren't listed anymore because I've assigned them a check number, okay? So that's how that, that works. So you can see there's a lot of different ways that data gets put on that check register. So that's, like I said, that's how it really becomes your, um, I'd say it's a bank reconciliation, but it's a system reconciliation. You know, when you go to pay your parts bills, World Pack, let's say you wrote a bunch of checks or had electronic fund transfers or, you know, auto withdrawals from your checking account for parts warehouses. Well, they show up on your bank statement, then you may have to go into those vendors and start, you know, recon you might have to enter your payments. Yeah, that they've been taken out automatically, but now I actually have to post them. So that's where I would just click next payment method, I could say check here, say finish, and here, let's say it was an electronic funds transfer, I would just to be put to be printed and put EFT because WorldPack would draw it directly out of this checking account. And notice I have an option here to change my checking account. I'm going to hit cancel on this one just for fun, just to get out of here. That was a good, good example. And so we talked a little bit about beginning balances, entering that ending bank statement target amount that you're always looking to reconcile to at the end of the month. Talked a little bit about some different bank adjustments. Um, now, something that I do, this is a personal thing. You could do it really any way you want. But when I go to my, uh, you know, I run my daily sales report every day for the shop. Okay, and it shows me all my activity. I usually look at this for about three milliseconds and then switch over to balancing my drawer at the end of the day. So I'm going to put, I'm going to have checks and all my credit cards and my cash. This, now, you guys remember, big difference between motor tracks and max tracks, that nothing that you do on this screen here actually affects anything else in the system. It's nothing other than a glorified pen and paper. And then, of course, once you're done with all of this, you just hit close and print. And you're, it, see, you used to say actually post, and they, they changed it, because you're not posting anything. You're just closing this window and printing out these reports. Now the second half of your end of day is after you do this report, you go into banking and make bank deposit. Now if you guys were motor tracks users previously, you'll remember your daily book actually had a section where you said make bank deposit and asked you which bank to make the deposit into. So, you know, I know you guys, a few of you guys on the call have heard this story a gazillion times, but I cannot tell you how shocked I was after diligently running this report every single day in the month of January 2008. So proud of myself. I had my whole world, had my bank 
deposit slips all stapled together to this report, even photocopied every single check we accepted and put my credit card batch machine, the whole thing. So my whole world was one big stapled together piece of paper for every day. So then I went to reconcile my bank statement in February, like February 5th or something like that. And I went into banking and I went into reconcile bank account and I looked at my checking account and I had nothing in here. I was, I'm like, oh my gosh, of course, the first thing I thought, Max Trax is broken. Something's wrong. So I called Rhonda, and Rhonda, of course, laughed to no end because the other half of your daily activity is to go into this bank and banking and make your bank deposit. So what I did based on those reports that I had printed out, it was so smooth, so easy to do, is I went into the checking account. And I actually would, for each day, to match my bank statement, I would click the checks or select the checks that I had on that deposit slip and any cash that I showed on that deposit slip, let's say just for example, and I would click next and I'd give it the date of whatever date it needed to be and I'd hit post and add another. Now what was interesting, and I actually kind of learned this by default because I never made a bank deposit in the month of January. What I learned, um, I'm not going to say this, what I learned in that bank deposit that I think what's really a good idea is to take your checks in your cash and make that one single deposit. And in our company, with our credit card processing, we would group all of our visas and MasterCard and actually and Discover at the time. Yeah, we grouped all three of those together. So then I would do actually three, if I took that many credit cards in, three deposits a day. I would do one deposit that was checks in cash that matched my deposit slip. I would do another one where it was just visas and MasterCard and Discover and that would be its own deposit to click post to add another. I would actually didn't print these, to be honest with you guys. And then I would actually go back in and do my American Express separately. And frankly, if I took three American Express in one day, I still would tag one American Express at a time and deposit it and click go back and post add another. The reason why was on my bank statement, my American Express, even if I took three in one day, would still show up on my bank statement one at a time. So what I was always trying to do was at the end of the day when I was doing my bank deposits, I was trying to parallel how it was going to show up when I went to do my bank reconciliation because it made it so much easier. You're just tag, 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 tag down to your list. And what is showing up on Max Tracks is showing up exactly what's on your bank statement. So it made the bank statement a lot easier, whereas some people take their checks, their cash, their credit cards, and just make one single deposit for the day. Well, then when you go to your bank statement, you're going to have to be adding stuff up all over the place. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys, you guys follow me on that one? OK. So I think I've pretty much gone through most of the stuff that I wanted to cover for today's webinar on the bank reconciliation. Any questions? Yeah, if you execute your, uh, or if you execute, if you um, go ahead and, and balance out your checkbook and everything, and then you find out that there was a $100 check and its number was 110 and there was a $100 check and its number was 135 and it's in another month and you click the wrong one, how do you unpost the, recon the reconciliation and fix it? You don't. That you don't do. So there's no way of unposting a reconciliation? Mm -mm. Once it's done, it's done. Let's go up to, and notice here in this cleared column, see here I'm in, yeah, I'm in the bank register, or a check register. So this is a cleared column. So you'll see as I arrow up, see the Ys? Mm -hmm. Let's look. Let's look. Can I highlight this and click edit? Can I? Yeah, it will let me. So it says cleared. Okay, so it will let me change the check number even though it's cleared. Let me see if I hit delete. Okay, this check cannot be voided or deleted because it has been reconciled. Okay, so I take it back. I can change my check number by hitting edit. Um, good call. I think that's what it was. But I can't mm -hmm. delete it. I can't delete it. Um, let's see if I can change the payable. Can I change this? 
to um, UPS. No, can I click Find? Make this to U.S. Treasury. Okay, so I can change my payables, but you know you got to be careful. Slippery, slippery slope. Because I need to change my pay payee, but you know then I ha then I have to start changing my who you know which this got dispersed to. So yeah, you can start changing some stuff around. And you know, frankly, I show this to somebody in programming, they'll be ah, lock that down. <laughs> And the reason why is, let's say, for example, this check was written to Yellow Pages. And let's say I changed it to U.S. Treasury, and I put all my bank disbursements in here. You know, the whole system is so tied together. If you start making those edits, the, you know, the things that are automated in the system, you know, you just start fooling. And not to say that, not to say that you can't, and they really did design the, the accounting part of the program to be so much more flexible and editable and that kind of thing. And we really have the ability to do that. But once you start juggling numbers and stuff like that, kind of doing it, again, it doesn't mimic what I did in real life. It doesn't mimic the way I would have done it to match my daily activity in my business. Then you start running into to, to problems. Um, so uh, on a couple of these things, yeah, you can go back and edit it. Of course, like I said, you can't delete it because the system thinks, well, if the bank cleared, if the bank cleared that check, how can you actually in real life delete it? You know, you could always issue a credit back to somebody and maybe hand them cash. Um, but that's where I kind of get back to my whole theory is keep it as real to life as possible. Good, good question. Appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions? So who on the call has gone through this bank reconciliation progress or process on their own? Saray, are you on with us? Let's see, I wonder if Kim's with us. I think Kim has attempted this. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today. I appreciate everybody's uh, participation. And if you have any questions when you get into this, I would recommend watching this webinar. But we also have on our website we have the uh, training video for bank reconciliation. So if you just head out to scottsystems.com and go under the training videos, same place where we have the archive webinars, go under training videos on our homepage, you can head on down to the banking and um, beginning bank account balance setup. What we just covered is listed on the site and also reconcile bank accounts. So you have those two tools available to you when you're ready to do your own bank reconciliation. Well, thanks, everyone, for your time. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks.